bitch. Hey. Make sure you don't forget it. Don't forget to mention it. Make sure you don't forget it. Once you start to feel it, super hype. Hey. My runners and my joggers from my publicists and bloggers from the dirt and ocean water to buildings across the border. I got it. I got hype. I got everything you ordered from the day to the night. We do things you never thought of. I be super hype. They say I do too much. I might run it up. So you know what's up. Showman, ex-UK champion, looking to put on a show in front of this first time he's ever been in a stadium event, wants to go big and uh, doesn't want to go home. No, he doesn't want to go home. Uh, this Nissan Silvia S15 with a 2JZ underneath the bonnet, 866 horsepower. And as you can see, the back end of that car held together with hopes and dreams, Dave. And stickers. <laughs> <laughs> They're load-bearing stickers on the back of Oliver Evans' car right now. Thrown into that first corner, see if Ollie Evans can get the job done. Aggressive, comes in on big angle, will he make it work? He will make it work. Very nice from Oliver Evans. 
right to the edge of the circuit. Doesn't have to mind the back end of that car too much. Nice on the inner zone as well. A little transition back. Very calculated so far. Judges will like the technicality here. Drops out of that zone just a little bit early. Comes through the center transition. Oh, very late oh. almost up on the curb. That's going to take him time to get back into this outer zone. That transition in the middle of the track is so important, but a good job all the same from Oliver Evans. Looks comfortable, you know, in terms of his proximity to the wall, his gear ratio, the car is working. Just needs to tidy up a little bit on his transitions because it's the timing that's costing yeah. him there. Nothing. And the score drops in for Oliver Evans. It will be an 80, Dave. Not, as, not as bad as what we thought. No, I thought it was we around there. That a little I too was hard. critiquing it. Yeah. I thought he could have got a 90 there because he went really, really aggressive to the yeah. walls. Tidy that transition up, and there's a contender for a top qualifier if he can, you know, if he can sort those little issues out. Yep. Also, you get to lead your battles first, which is a big advantage a big here. Advantage. Big advantage. A big advantage. Here. Anyway, he's on the start line to see it. Oliver Evans ready to go, representing Wales and the United Kingdom. As he comes into that first corner, fires in, very aggressive, goes to the wall, makes it count. Wow. Very nice, but comes off the zone a little early, but gets that inside zone perfect. Oliver Evans right to the wall. This is very fluid from Evans compared to his first run. Looking strong on his track is the young Welshman as he goes back out to the wall. Plenty of tire smoke, plenty of angle. Judges will be enjoying this one. And the transition, can he get it right? Very fluid. That doesn't slow down too much. Oh, he goes a little heavy. Oh, nice. Touches the bumper off the wall. Phenomenal job from Oliver Evans as he takes it across the line. That's a man comfortable with the length of that car. <laughs> so I'll tell you one thing, it was risky at times. I'll tell you what, he risked it all there, Dave, and I think he's going to be rewarded for this. As we've said, an 80 on his first qualifying run. I think Evans has just bumped himself up that order ever so slightly. This was, you know what, clinical, because it was technically correct in my eyes, and he put down an incredible line, just touching the wall where he needed to. Thing is stepping up. The speed is stepping up. And it shows that if you do it fast, yep. it works. It works. It works, because I'll tell you where that speed's being gained, in the center section. Yep. A lot of guys slowing down there, slow, kind of safe transitions. He was flying through there, and that's what bumped up the speed, I think. I'll tell you, it's going to bump a score up to an 89. We talked about top 10, into seventh goes Oliver Evans, and he's left the best to last in qualifying this season. Biggest run of the year for him so far. <laughs> versus Sweden in the top 32. And I'll tell you one thing, bets are off. Well, let's go through that moment we was meant to go through a couple of months ago. They're off the line. Evans to lead out Earlton. Earlton looking on form this weekend. But Oliver Evans, a point to prove here in Poland this weekend. Nice initiation into the outside zone. But look at Earlton, took the time, waited for... Oh, and big wash. I thought he was going to hit the wall there. Earlton washed that car, had to wait for it to grip back up again to find... Oliver Evans is S15, they transition through the centre of the circuit, and now Earlton starts to lose some ground. Doesn't look like that car working 100%, because the front wheels don't seem to be going where he is, but now he finds that proximity again across the line. In there, we'll hear it from the judges, but it looked to me like it was just an error from Erlinson in the chase. However, stranger things have happened in the second half of battles here, and Erlinson deemed at fault. Just a yeah. little nod from the judges there. He is deemed at fault for that understeer. I think he just caught himself a little bit, got a little too close, and then when he transitioned, he thought the car would try to transition through the center of the circuit, because I thought, if it's going to get understeer again, he's traveling at big speed across the track towards that concrete wall. This could end in tears. Well, they're back on the line. They're back ready to go. It will be Evans to chase down Christian Erlinson now. Oh, look at the aggression from Oliver Evans. As Erlinson fires in that cream, Mocker, GT86, nice line through the outside zone. Evans playing it safe here, giving him some room to maneuver. Now starts to make the dive, looking for the rear corner. That GT86 as Evans wanders and waves in the outside zone, tucks the wheel on the door as Christian Earlton falls way off that qualifying line through the center of the circuit. They go, Christian Earlton's a little nerved here. He can feel Oliver Evans breathing down his neck as Evans puts the pressure on into that final outside zone. Evans looking strong. Now, you know what? That's a statement from Oliver Evans because he didn't need to be that aggressive 
of in the chase position. But I think Oliver Evans took it as a chance, one, to show off to all of us and the fans, but two, <laughs> I think he took it as a chance to know that if this is going to be a win, he can't back down on the next run, and therefore he needs to get that close proximity battle practice, get in the zone, be able to adapt to the lead car. And boy, did he do a good job of that, and he adapted to Erlinson right throughout the course. But look at Christian Erlton's average speed, though, Dave. 70 kilometers an hour. That's a new benchmark. That just goes to show you how fast Christian Erlton was going, how much he was pushing that car. Look at this, though, from Evans. What a statement. Puts the wheel almost to the door, almost leaves a little mark on the door. And Oliver Evans playing with danger, but you could see how far out of that outside zone, how far off that qualifying line, Erlton. Christian, look at look at Oliver Evans is looking for tyre marks. Look, yeah, I got yeah, one there. there got you one go. there. Look at he's like, well, do you know what? Christian Erlton will be ecstatic because he's had a, a pretty bad year. Um, and to get into top 32 and actually make a battle is where he wanted to be. Absolutely. Let's see which way the judges drop in. It's an obvious one. Oliver Evans getting the win and going through to our top 16 here at the main event. I think that would have been obvious to Evans and Erlinson that that happened. I'm sure Evans knew from the radio uh, halfway through the run that he had the big advantage. He knew it was a good chase. Feeling all those Sahara-like conditions in Wales. You know how it goes. Um, of course, being a little sarcastic there. And <laughs> no. Diogo, Diogo Correa. Now, this is the thing. You've just watched that as Oliver Evans and Diogo Cray. You've just watched the championship contender go in the wall on the first corner. You've got to take this a little more cautiously. No, but do you? You watch what Kevin Pascoli just done. You said, well, I, yeah, anything's good point. possible. Good point. You've Ian. seen um, what Peter done. Peter was okay. Peter was like halfway house. Halfway Pascoli house, went yeah. all the way one oh, way. Pascoli was like, yeah. And then he got away with it. But Shanahan didn't. I think you've got to come in on that first corner a little bit more cautious. Nonsense, poopy pants. And the problem is, when you deal with the first drift of this <laughs> circuit, um, it's all from there. So can you get through the first corner? I mean, I'm watching the track. It's completely drenched. The rain looks to have eased off now, but it's completely soaked out there. Yeah, it certainly is. Oliver Evans' face then, when he opened the window and looked at the camera, is like, I don't know what's going to happen here, but they're off the line. It will be Oliver Evans to chase down Diogo Correa. Both guys come in nice and hot. Oh, Correa throws it away. Big impact. Both in to the wall and that was Evans avoiding the contact a door flown open on Evans car I think he thought he was going to crash that way worse than he did yeah Evans not happy here Evans not happy whatsoever and again that's another issue with the lead car look at the radiator on the back of Correa's car hanging out of the car Correa hit big there to the car oh, the car is destroyed Dave look yeah. both rear wheels smashed both tires deflated on the rear and this is a big impact for Oliver Evans, the car is absolutely in tatters, and now here and a harsh reality for Oliver Evans. Yeah, feeling so so sorry for all the drivers having to compete in these very difficult conditions here now. But I just wanted to jump in to interject there of what it, the actual rule book says here. So in this instance, we have said that Korea is at fault. Therefore, uh, Evans had nowhere to go to actually avoid that collision. Therefore, Evans has the competition timeout. But then to go past that situation. If Oliver Evans, and the same with Juha Rintanen before him, if they can't fix the car in that allotted 10 minute time frame, then they um, automatically win the battle, but they cannot progress to the next stage of the competition. Therefore, the, the driver that they would be supposed to be competing with in the next battle would automatically get a bye run. That's what our rule book states. Thanks, Kev. Um, and there you go, Dave. So that, that, that's how it works. This yeah. is so everyone now clear the rule book. Uh, we have spoke about this rule book tonight. And uh, we've had this rule book out a few times this season, especially in Riga, where we see a lot of contact, especially in Germany, where we see a lot of contact between these guys pushing 110%. So there you go, in black and white from Kevin O'Connell, our head judge. 10 minute time being allocated to Oliver Evans to repair the car. If he can't repair the car, he will get the win, he will advance through, but he cannot compete in the next battle. So he will advance to the great eight, but then he can't go any further in competition. So now look, the, the panic starts to set in from Evans. As the news gets to Oliver Evans, he now understands he needs to source and running? get the crew ready to running? assemble these parts. Now look. 10 seconds later. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. You know, spilling the car and saying, well, that's what there he is. There he goes. I do not believe he's made the call on this. Oh, he's repaired the back end as well, just for... Uh, aesthetics. Just for aesthetics, yeah. There Oliver is. Evans has made his 10-minute competition timeout. Now, remember, he was going to win the battle anyway. Yep. 
but he wouldn't have been able to progress in the yeah. competition. So, th so this is the technicality. So this, this is what they said to him. If you can get that car fixed in 10 minutes and you can go and pull the handbrake, get into that first corner, just show that your car is working, you're going to go to the top eight. Because he has, like I say, a track just like this, just up the road from him, and he's on the lights. Look at him shaking his stress. head. He's shaking his head saying, never what? in my life did I think it would come he down feels to this. Like, he feels like in about 10 minutes he's going to wake up, it's going to be this it's morning. It's going to be a going, dream. the strangest dream. Yeah. I went to Poland, I crashed the car, I flipped up in the air. It and rained. Then it rained, and then a lot of people that I didn't know put a load of bits of cars that weren't mine back on my car. And look at the tyres on the back. He's got tyres on the back that say wet on them. He's yeah. pulled out the new, he's pulled out another game now. Well, let's see if Oliver Evans can just get into this first corner. All he's got to do is initiate. Please don't crash the car, Ollie, because at this point, I'm not sure there's as much enthusiasm after this run as there was before, but he gets through it, and that to me looks like Oliver Evans is going through to the top eight, defining out our final top eight position. And Ian, it's been a night, it's been a night for drift fans, it's been a night for these drivers, but some are surviving, some are adapting. And to be honest, you're not looking at drivers on that track anymore, you're looking at heroes. Well, here we go, we need to make it official. Our graphics dropped on screen. Evans gets the win, advances to the Great Eight, and now he will be allowed to compete against Juha Rittenden for a spot in the final four, Dave. Relatively new to the game, and Juha Rittenden have been around a long, long time now. The window slides open. The face of a man that has He no shakes his head and <laughs> closes the window and says, there's enough of that weather out there. Uh, there we go. Evans from Wales to take on Juha Rittenden from Finland. They can't go in hot. You can't approach that first corner too hot. You have to learn by watching what's happened before. You've got to take it easy here. You certainly have. And there we go, off the line. Slowly but surely, they make their way down into that initiation. And Evans will say, well, there's nothing left on the car that I can damage. So here we go. Rittenden comes in hot once again. Evans takes it tentative. Now starts to drive away from Rittenden. In the outside zone goes Evans. Nice lines. He drops down. Rittenden, though, looking in the crease. Starts to use that anti-lag. Uses a clutch to transition. He loses a little bit of ground, though, on the out inside zone. Evans up and gone on that big long outside zone. Through they come as now Rittenham reels him back in once again. Clever driving from Yuha Rittenham, but he's on the inside edge of the circuit. Evans pulls away once again. They transition back across the track. Rittenham makes a big dive. He needs to get the deal sealed here. And he goes in too hot, oh. spins the car. What a night. What a night. I just don't understand it. I thought Evans was going in the wall. I jump back in my seat and then rinse it and spins. I thought he was going to hide behind the seat at one point. I, well, I mean... I mean, what, Ian? How are you going to sum up what we're seeing here? Uh, the most experienced driver on the grid spins out against the rookie in the rain in a stadium. Go on, tell the people how this, this happens all the time <laughs> or how we're going to figure this one out. Hey, listen, <laughs> no one knows what's going to happen at the moment. Well, that's a good it's been point. the most unpredictable year, let alone round. Um, I, I, I'm trying to process this in my head. For me, the grip in Evans' car seems to be at that little bit more because Evans seems to be able to control that car on and off throttle. Watch this as he comes in. Little dab with the handbrake, comes in. He's on throttle, on throttle. I can't see if he's braking. No, he's on throttle there. He rubs the wall and I think Rittenden thinks he's going in too hot. I yet. think Rittenden thinks he's it's going a crash. in. Yeah. And he backs out and Evans goes, Suck uh -huh. see, you. see you later. And he's gone. And I think Mario Kart, banana yeah, skin. Yeah, but I tell you one thing, it hasn't rained on the surface for about 25 minutes now. Yeah. So we're starting to see. Well, look at the line. We can yeah. look out the window. We can see there's, a, there's a line there's starting a line. to form here. So there's a little bit more grip on it than there was before. Let's see what happens now. Can Evans hold on to that advantage? He's playing it very, very safe, Dave. Look at this. He's came in, coming very, very tentatively now. He needs to keep within a few. Uh, zones distance of Rinden, and I think he can do that. And Rinden now starting to turn the screw, trying to drive away. Look at this, using everything he can. As now Evans, look, he's got that grip in the car. This is what I was talking about. He can manage it, he can dial it, he can balance it. As Rinden gets into the outside zone, he's up to the wall, and Evans is playing with him. Look at the shallow angle, flicking that car, making sure he's still in it, still doing what the judges require. As Rinden goes right across the circuit, big flick. Now Evans starts to read him in. He knows he needs to steal the deal. Put a standable foreign on this one as they both go to the wall and look at this from Evans as he climbs up onto the door of Juha Rittenden's S15. One half of a corner left to go as Evans is very shallow across the line. Evans kicked his foot through the bulkhead of the car there to not straighten up across the line. You could see through the air. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And Kick now flipping. he might just have taken down the most experienced driver on the grid in to go into the top four, his yeah. highest ever result in drifting to date. And you talk about unpredictability, he does very well here, adapts everywhere. It's not spectacular, he's playing it safe, he knows he has the advantage from the first run, or at least he assumes he has the advantage from the first run. But um, 
just towards the end. Oliver Evans, you can see left foot, right foot, smashing the clutch accelerator, just, just drift 20 more feet. That's all he wanted from the car. Yeah, he was literally making that car do things that it didn't want to do out there on a circuit. Just take a look back at these shots. You can see the way that Evans was balancing that S15. Incredible stuff. Yuha written and did everything he could, but I think the spin and I think the line was a not enough. And there we go, we make it official. Oliver Evans heads through to the final four here in the final round, and he's thumbs up. But it is going to be the Irish versus the Welsh. Whoever wins takes on Fiancek in the final. Whoever loses takes on Karkoshik in the third and fourth place playoff. That's what's at stake. I don't even know what way to call it. Of course, everyone's going to look at James Dean and say he's the favorite, but Fiancek's making mistakes, every driver's making mistakes, and one small error, one misjudgment, one millimeter that you don't make the right decision on, and you can hand it to the other driver. And Oliver Evans has nothing to lose here. He has absolutely nothing to lose. He can throw the kitchen sink at James Dean here, and James Dean, I think, wants to get to that final, finish the year on a high, and take on Fiancek. This is a big one. It certainly is. And look at this. They both struggle to get off the line. Dean struggles immensely to get off the line. And that allows Oliver Evans to get onto the back bumper as they fire through. Look at this. Oliver Evans giving Dean the room. Dean, fire from you, Jangle. Oh, James Dean, massive error on entry. Fires on massive angle, and that upsets Evans. They get back into it, though, Dave. And now Evans angry that James Dean messed up the initiation, or did he, or was it done on purpose? That could be calculated from Dean, but look at Evans putting the wheel to the door. He says, if you think Angle's going to throw me off, you're going to want more than that. And they come down, they look through the centre of the circuit. Dean gets some room on Evans as he fires back across. Now Evans puts the power down, drives away, starts to rein in a little bit of lost ground as Evans follows Dean into that last outside zone, gets the car even closer, puts the wheel to the door across the line. Oh, Oliver Evans is driving angry right there from that moment. To me, it looked like the error was from James Dean on entry. I think what happened, so many other drivers happened to James Dean. I think he went in too hot on too much angle, expected there to be more grip there, and there wasn't. I'm going to watch the replay to see if that was the case. And here it is. Look at Evans. He's hungry. Dean, watch the rear wheels. Does he wash? He goes on big angle. He's, Dean hits the he's wall. breaking. He's breaking yeah. at the same time. He's, oh, he's off throttle. He's off throttle. He's decelerating. Hey, listen, Dave. That isn't easy to balance that car at those speeds. How did he get at out of it? That wall. How did That's he get what I'm out saying. Of it? Yeah. That show goes to show you the talent he has. That he can do that back into the wall and say, "Well, let's keep going." Evans, I think. He dealt with that. I think Evans bails out thinking Dean's spinning around, which is, which the judges will look at, but it looked to me, I'm not sure. Do you know what I'm just going to do? Excuse me while I take my hat off to two incredible drivers, because that was phenomenal. That was so close to being an accident. James Dean there, the grip, I don't know if it's changed, potentially. I'm looking at this, look, look, we're looking out the window. Look at the line around the circuit, it's yeah. starting to dry. But is the initiation a little looser on the outside? He was very wide there, look. He's, he's over 90 degrees and he hits the wall. He deals with that so well. Now the question is, and I'm not going to answer it because it's not my job to answer it, does Evans bail out because he thinks Dean's going in and that's his mistake? Or does Dean make the mistake and Evans has to bail out and it's Dean's mistake? You can have a little talk amongst yourself at home of what you think, but both drivers stayed in it and stayed going, which means if whatever happens right now, James Dean's knocked a block here. It wasn't a light tap. He's moved a block on the circuit. So he has hit the wall significantly. We saw the sparks fly up from the rear of the car. Evans and Dean are back on the line, which means we have a completed run but shows that anyone on this track is not comfortable. And how could you be? I don't even think the lorry driver who's going out to repair the wall feels comfortable yeah. tonight, Dave. He's not taking it out of first gear. <laughs> he's, he's taking it nice and steady down there. So there we go. James Dean back on the line. A little shake of the head from James Dean. Oh, that says a lot too. Yeah. That says a lot too. If he thinks he's made the mistake, what you got here is a James oh, Dean. A confidence look yeah. from him. Well, here's the thing. What if James Dean does think he's at fault? There's Mike, uh, Michael Sheehan, James Dean's spotter. He's going to be saying, maybe you are at fault, James. 
you're going to have to put in the chase run of your lifetime to get back into this and put Evans under pressure. Evans is never going to have a chase run this aggressive in his career. Can he stick with it? Well, he's going to have to stick with it. And Evans now is going to have to try and lay down everything he's got to his disposal to try and pull away from James Dean, because Dean is going to be with him, and he is with him. As they fall out of the outside zone, down they come. Look at Dean, wheel to wheel. They manage it, they balance it. Oh, and a little wobble from Evans as he comes through that inner zone. In to the outer zone they go as he dials on the angle. A little contact with the wall from Oliver Evans as James Dean now looks for the door of the S15 of Evans as he pushes right up onto the rear wheel through the centre section they go. Dean takes a different line as he looks to slingshot into the second to last outer zone. Dean on the inside as Evans goes to the wall. Now Evans finds the grip, tries to drive away, but James Dean is with him. Onto the rear wheel he goes. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable driving from these two heroes on this track. Evans hits the wall, Dean hits the wall in his run. There's no rear ends left on the car, and Dean sticks with him through the entire circuit. The judges are going to decide this one. I think it's going to come down to that, to that initiation on the first half of the battle, but the second half of the battle, you would not believe the conditions these guys are driving in and making it look like they're somewhat in control of those cars. And every now and again, a little touch with the wall or a little over complication of a transition, but they made it work. Yeah, they certainly did make it work. Look back at the replay. Look at this, the proximity between these guys. A 56 and a 57, are you kidding me? These guys are matched evenly. For me, there was a wobble there from Evans. I'm not sure uh, how the judges are going to see that. Is it enough to outweigh the initiation from Dean? Is that even a factor for us? Are we, we, we may be going way over the top. I mean, we're going to know from the judges soon enough, but for a space in the final, it's going to be Evans or James Dean. James Dean will go up against familiar foe <laughs> Peter of Gainsek. Evans has never made it this far in the competition. Who's going to the final? It's Oliver Evans from Wales. He's going to the final of Driftmasters in his rookie year. He cannot believe it. One minute he was flying through the air. The whole crew in the, every pit area in the whole place took every S15 part, put it into his car. Multiple teams get him back out. He's beaten James Dean, and he's going to the final against Peter Fjainsek. Got to go quickly to you, Kevin, for a quick summary. That first corner, surely it came down to that. Yeah, it absolutely all comes down to that first corner. Unfortunately, James Dean just coming in way too hot on his initiation, makes contact with the wall, is very lucky on his part to actually be able to pull it out of the wall. But in the chase position, Oliver is coming in just as hot to try and get it onto the door of James, sees that he's going into the wall and has absolutely nowhere to go, pulls the car out, and from there on, he has to straighten up and reinitiate. Unfortunately, because he straightens up, then we have to deem it an incomplete, but that incomplete was caused by James Dean going into the wall. So overall, it was a massive advantage to Oliver Evans going into the second run. And he just plays it nice and safe in his lead run. Even though James Dean was absolutely on his door the whole way throughout, it was not enough to overturn that incomplete from the first run. And Oliver Evans gets the win, and he's in the final. Yep, Oliver Evans is in the final against Peter Feinsek. Classic Driftmaster scenario. He is with Becky right now. Oliver, I'm looking at you right now, and there's a look of disbelief on your face. Can you believe you are in the final here at round six of the Driftmasters European Championship? Uh, no, <laughs> definitely not. No, like, we, well, as soon as it rained, the, the track just completely changed, and, like, everyone that was going in, it was just, like, sending in, sending lambs to slaughter, you know? It was just uh, uh, terrifying, is the only way to describe it, so... Yeah, just to make it this far and somehow the car survived and yeah, I don't know, who who knows, who cares? I don't even care anymore. Like, it just like, yeah, we're, we're just on tour, me and my old man, Scotty, Ben, Chris, mate, oh, we're just like Old Spice, Old Spice is getting about on this bike here. We don't even care, this is just a bonus. We're in bonus time now. Yeah, so yeah, it's just, uh, we just, um, beat that guy in that green car. I'm not sure who he is though, not really heard of him before. No? Is he kind of a big deal? <laughs> Oliver Evans, very confident there. Uh, congratulations, you are through to the final. You will be going up ahead, uh, up against Peter Viensek. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, happy that Piotr's, Piotr's won the championship and everything, you know, like he's, he's just an absolute machine. So to get to drive with him now, driving with Dean, like I knew I could follow him in as well. And it's just, yeah, it's just madness driving with these kind of this caliber of driver, you know. So, yeah, we're, we're giving it a go and don't really know what's going on. So good luck in your next battle. Thank you.
Well, there you have it. Oliver Evans doesn't know what's going on. Oliver, we've been there for the last four hours <laughs> with you. I was just going to say. We have no idea what's going on. I'm not sure anyone at home knows what's going on. And uh, Oliver Evans, he's a great character. He always he likes to play a few jokes yeah. in the pits. And again, he's a confident man, but he's a respectful man at the same time. And again, having a couple of jokes with James Dean. And that's what it's about behind the scenes. Of course. Trying to lighten the mood a little bit because the pressure is real. This is it. The underdog versus the champion. It all comes down to this. Evans, Fjainsek, one more battle before we're done. Ladies and gentlemen, let's head to the final. You're watching fact, dreams come true. Oliver Evans, ex-UK champion, Driftmasters rookie, goes up against your current reigning and defending champion, Peter Fjainsek, in front of a sellout arena in Poland. Evans, we heard him in the interview, absolutely nothing to lose. He's beaten James Dean. Could Oliver Evans beat Dean and Vjainsek in one night at the biggest event in European drift history to make all of those drivers from all around the world believe that it's possible? Or will Vjainsek finish the year as he started as the best we've ever seen in this championship? We're about to find out. The fans in attendance are about to find out. Now you're about to find out. Evans to chase in Vjainsek, the last battle of the night. Here we go. Off the line, no messing around from Vincent. Look at this, and Evans chases him down straight away. Tentative initiation, but... Oh! And Vincent puts the car into a spin. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh! Are you kidding me? Is this real life? Because it doesn't feel like it. Oliver Evans puts one hand on the biggest trophy in the game, the finale of Driftmasters. Rounds. I'm going to need to take a breath. Oliver Evans Are you, could win I, the you, biggest European drift event in history. Vjainsek has spun the car. Evans can't believe what's going on. He's taken damage, but he doesn't care. He's taken damage all night. There is four different S15s in Oliver Evans' car right now in terms of suspension, and he's still in the fight. Oh! No! God, please, no! 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 And it could be decided here and now. It, it could, could be, be decided it could be here and now that if Jainsek is at fault, Evans is going to take the win. And I'll tell you one thing, he came into this about a thousand to one to be in this position. So if you think that you can predict anything in drifting anymore, you may as well throw it away. Let's see what happened. I want to know where, where Evans hit the wall. He was coming in, look, directly behind Vincek. Vincek goes wide. Look at this. Evans is on the brakes. He's gone. Vincek's gone when he comes into that corner. It's again, same thing as James Dean, same thing as Jack Shannon. He went in too hot. He's over 90 degrees. And Evans has nowhere to go. And the reason Evans slips up to the wall is because he's on the brakes. Look, on the brakes, bam, hits the wall. There's nowhere for Evans to go. He's trying to avoid contact with Peter Vincek. <laughs> and Evans has been in the wall twice tonight in the same area. Look same at this. wheel. He goes on power. What happens? Vincek. The car just does not react to the initiation whatsoever. Does he? Is it that dry line? Does he think he's more pace on the way up and more grip than he does and he gets out to the edge of the circuit? He's, I mean, he's off throttle at this point because the, yeah. the wheels aren't spinning, you know, under power. They're just rotating under momentum. Is Peter Fjainsek going to win the championship and then in the final spin, spin out against out. Oliver Evans? Is this really happening? Is this, I mean, look, alternative angle once again. Look at well, look at the rear wheels. Starts to apply the power, then gets out of the power because he knows he's spinning. No, I, I don't think Evans is locked up at this stage. Yeah, Evans, Evans is fully is locked fully up. fully locked up and he skates the car on the wet, on the wet rubber up into the wall. So I, mean, I, I, I don't know. Look at this. Evans is like, but I don't even know anymore. A minute ago, I was kick flipping the car through the sky. Peter Vincek's got a smile on his face. He's saying, well, whatever happens, I've won the championship. And Vincek's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry this had to happen to you. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I've just well, received word in my ear. The battle is done because Evans can't compete in the second half. It's going to come down to who is at fault. The decision is going to be made of who has won the final round. One of these men has already won the championship, but Peter Vjainsek or Oliver Evans, one will be deemed at fault. The judges have decided. They've deliberated over it. And one of these guys is going to win the final of probably the most difficult and challenging event of all time. Who's it going to be? It's Oliver Evans! Oliver Evans has won the final of Driftmasters, and nobody would ever have called it. The dream has come through. He cannot believe what has happened. He's beaten James Dean, 
He's beaten Peter Fjainsek, and he's won the most difficult event in the history of Drift Masters. Dreams come true, ladies and gentlemen. Dreams come true. They certainly do, Dave, and they come true on wet, rainy nights in the middle of Poland on a tarmac speedway stadium built for the Drift Masters European Championship. And he, wow. can't, even, he can't even get his car to the podium because it's absolutely twisted in half. Well, one young man from Wales has just come and won it all against all the odds, and that is so inspirational, and what a tone to leave this season on. Absolutely, guys. Ollie, you must be absolutely on top of the world. Here you are, round six, and you're on the top step. Don't believe it. Uh, just, yeah, the whole, the whole day's been a blur. You know, it got turned upside down when it started raining. I nearly got turned upside down as well, and, yeah, just coming up against Piotr, James, and, you know, like, you look through the battle trees and you think, Oh, yeah, that's that's as far as what I'm going to get today. And then, yeah, I, I just I still I still don't understand what happens. I think I think how the track is, I think any any kind of mistake going down there. And, you know, like I've I've been in many walls and, uh, you know, one of the one of my home tracks, Buxton, Buxton Raceways, that's a banger circuit. It's basically like this. So, yeah, you hit the wall, choose you up and spits you straight out. So, yeah, I'm over the moon. Very inspirational for all the drivers out there that were well, looking to maybe one day come to Drift Masters. You got to tell them it's all possible. It's possible. It's possible. But you know, you've got to you've got to dig deep if you want to come and play with the big boys. You know, it's uh, it's a it's a dangerous game. You know, you know, like we we've dipped our toe in this year and and to be honest, completely out of my depth. And that's what you've got to do. I, I thought we've got to come and give it a go. I had uh, I had no idea what to expect and. You know, like, these guys have just brought me on, you know, leaps and bounds. So, yeah, I'm, I'm completely over the moon. I, I can't believe it. Yeah, it's just, it's not real. I, I say it's a dream, but it's more of a nightmare the way this has been today. So, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy. So happy. Congratulations, Ollie Evans. You are our winner of round six of the Drift Masters European Championship. Congrats. Well, I'll tell you what. It's been a nightmare, then it was a dream, then it was a nightmare, then it was a dream again. And I'll tell you one thing, inspiration for any driver on the grid from any championship across the world. Believe in yourself, dip your toe in. Oli Evans, the final event. Never heard of him. <laughs> final event of the season and you bring him a win. How does that feel? Uh, I can't even explain. You know, like we've, we've had like, we've travelled all over Europe and then from here, you know, we were just like, right, let's just go to Poland, pick the car up, and said, come on, have a go, let's see what we're thinking. And yeah, basically like my home track looks good. So, you know, running walls, wrecking cars, you know, like, yeah, that's what I'm all about. You know, if it's, if it's a dangerous track, send me in, send me in. <laughs> You've done us all proud, man. It's been amazing to watch. Well done. Thank you.